Hi, this is Steve Zara from Zara Dental Lab. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate on how to bend a circumferential clasp. Um, there's a couple different names for it. Some people call it a rot wire clasp, a circumferential, a C clasp, or just a wraparound clasp. I'm going to use chromium cobalt wire to bend my, my circumferential clasp. Follow the link below and you can see a demonstration on another YouTube video that I made, the difference between using stainless steel and chromium cobalt, the benefits of this type of wire compared to stainless steel on breaking points. Um, you can follow the link below. I'd take a quick survey of the model um, to make sure that there's no undercuts, some natural undercuts. And I'll give you a demonstration of what a natural undercut is um, on this model. I'm going to show you this area right here is known as the undercut where you can see the light that shines through my blade in between the tooth and the gum line. If I was to lay my wire directly in here, go ahead and make a real nice bend and just seat that right in there. This might look great. It's bent. Um, I'm, obviously, I would keep going. But it looks really nice bent on the tooth. But the problem is, when the patient goes to lift the appliance off, it's caught on this tooth on the, under, on the undercut, which is that space I was uh, showing you. So what you want to do is you actually want to lay the the wire above the undercut. This way, when you're going to bury it in acrylic, it's actually above that point of contact with the gingiva. This way, when your plans comes off, you can easily take it off. And worst case scenario is the doctor needs to tighten it up. He can just take a three prong and go ahead and tighten it if he um, prefers. But for the most part, the important thing is, is not to lock it directly into that tooth. Um, if this was a retainer, it's not a retainer, but if it was a retainer, you would never get the retainer off the pa out of the patient's mouth. It would be, if anything, you're going to start damaging the molar by trying to pull it off every, every uh, time. Now, in this case, this is a basic orthodontic model where I'm going to readjust this clasp to make it fit. And some people like to have these really, I've seen them where they're really long and tight. And when, if you go all the way up to this corner right here, to the, to the, um, the next molar, and you bend the tooth, and you, I'm going to tighten it up just a little bit, make slight adjustments. There, it's laying in there real nice. But if you go all the way up to this connection point between the two teeth, all you're doing is, the more wire you have, the more problems you're going to have later when the child's taking it in and out of their mouth. So what I like to do is make it more, more or less two-thirds, well, it's actually like 80% of the tooth. And that's just over the years of having experience of making wraparound retainers with wires, that if you go all the way up, you're just making more wire to bend and cause problems later. So you want to go about 80%. All in all, this is a pretty easy class to bend. And once I find my sweet spot, I can start tucking it in. And you make little tiny, there's, there's like little, there's a little bump right here in the model that I have to make the adjustment for. 
is if I just lay it straight across, you can see I put a little tuck in the, in the wire, a little subtle tuck. If I just go straight across, it's not going to fit right in the patient's mouth. And this way, I'm going to cut in towards the model, and this part's going to be buried in acrylic. And obviously, this is really long, so I'm going to shorten it. And you want it to be about, I would say, about a millimeter, millimeter and a half at the most, 1.5 millimeters off the tissue. This allows the acrylic to only be as thick as your wire. Maybe a tad, you know, tad more. You obviously, your wire is going to be buried in acrylic. But if you have it like this off the model, you're going to have a really thick retainer. But if you start to have it more like just enough where you can see the light under it, that's a millimeter. And then you're going to add some retention. And you can do your own design. This way you can kind of tell um, who made the retainer. I like to use uh, like lightning. Kind of like a lightning bolt design just because that's my preference. So if you were going to put this in acrylic, your next step would be to add a little separator. And I'm just doing this, this side as a demonstration. And you could either wax this this in. What I like to do is add liquid fillet, which is a glue that I can just put a little dot of glue, just enough to hold it, and then I'll activate the glue. And I can have enough time to make slight adjustments. And it's in place. What's really cool is I can, you know, shake it off, hit it, smack the model, it's not coming off, and it's still my one millimeter off the tissue.